Karen and Abner, this is now the third person in our discounting danger investigation who filed a police report about Pruitt in the days leading up to the shooting. Now, her last police report was filed on March 11th. That is two days before Pruitt's arrest. She and her friend tell us the warning signs started in mid-February. They asked us to conceal their identities for the safety of their families. A mother's guilt. I beat myself up every day. She replays her last relationship in her head. Thinking that I let him back in. As her ex-boyfriend sits in jail on charges related to a deadly shooting. Once he was already in, it was like I was stuck. This mother of two says 49-year-old Jamie Lee Pruitt's charismatic personality initially won her over. But there were red flags. On March 5th, an argument escalated and police officers came to her home. When the police officer came inside with me, I just lost it and I told her, I said, I'm terrified of him. She told officers that Pruitt called her names in front of her son and threatened to take her children away, so she slapped him. When I think about my kiddos and about what they had to listen to and go through and that I had to search for my phone that he had thrown somewhere. All I was trying to do is get to the phone so I could call their dad and let them know that they needed to be picked up because unfortunately I didn't know what was about to happen. Pruitt told officers she punched him in the face and was knocked out for a second and hadn't called police because he believed she hit his phone. The officer noted he had to bring Pruitt back on topic multiple times because he continued to bring up his wealth and property. Pruitt agreed to leave his girlfriend's house, but told an officer he thought she might damage his Ferrari while he was away. The officer documented that Pruitt continued to antagonize his girlfriend as he left. Two days later, on March 7th, police received another phone call about Pruitt, who ran a vehicle repair shop. Cody Payne told officers Pruitt refused to return his vehicles. He threatened to kill me if I ever come trying to rush him or tell him how to do his job again. Pruitt said he would return the vehicle, so the officers left. But the problems didn't. The tires on my truck are stabbed. The keys for the motorcycles, all the keys, he broke them all off and snapped the handlebars on one of the bikes. He told me, get a lawyer, you effed up calling the cops. The next day, on March 8th, this mother made another phone call to police about Pruitt. She says Pruitt never moved back in, but she reported he forged her signature on a title and sold one of her vehicles without her permission. And the Ferrari parked in her garage? It didn't belong to Pruitt either. Three days later, on March 11th, Pruitt did return to her home. The security camera footage shows him walking around her property before she says he stole her security cameras. Another incident, she says, she reported to police. When I asked the police officers, I said, you know, well, this just happened. And they said, well, really, you know, you could file it if you wanted to. And I said, well, why would I not file it? Because, you know, that's my safety. That's the only thing I had at that point. I was grasping at straws. And they said, well, it's really just one step above a traffic violation. Later that same day, Pruitt published a Facebook Live video where she says she heard him admit to stealing some of her property and more. Just threat after threat after threat. And when the police officer came out, I was trying to get him to look at it. And he said, well, you know, I don't have 40 minutes to sit here and look at this video. And I said, I realize you don't, but I said, if you could just look at tidbits of it, he pretty much just said, if you can get it to us at a later date, that'd be great. But he said, I, I really can't stand here for that much longer and sit here and look at all of that. This is a clip of that Facebook Live video published on Saturday, March 11th. I'm fixing to show you on live TV what happens when you bray so pre it. I'm fixing to make the headlines right now. It's a video Payne watched too. He goes on there and posts, y'all want to mess with Jamie Lee Pruitt, I'm about to show y'all, I'm about to make the headlines. And then he goes out and makes the headlines. Two days later, on March 13th, Payne was shot in the arm. Payne says Pruitt pulled the trigger. Lubbock County Sheriff's deputies arrested Pruitt for not only shooting Payne, but for shooting three others, one of whom has since died. 
but everybody feels so guilty. Could we have done more? Could we have stopped it? Lots of people tried and lots of people were ignored. And that's just really hard. We have obtained another police report filed by someone who who did get a protective order against Jamie Lee Pruitt before the shooting. We'll have more on what that process entails and why others may have been unsuccessful. That's when KCBD continues to investigate discounting danger. 